We're really in a golden age of platformers, right? All bringing different strengths to the table. There are the crushingly hard ones I avoid like the plague, designed to test reflexes and break spirits. There are gentler ones that bring the fun and whimsy. And then there's the fantastically weird hybrids, like Yoko's Island Express. Pinball and platformers, together at last. Ori though, Ori brings the heart. And a whole lot of prettiness too. In the much anticipated sequel, it doesn't take all that long for misadventure to strike. Ori, our returning protagonist, and their newfound bird pal's flying lesson quickly veers off course, separating the two deep and unfamiliar surrounds, where a very real danger lurks. The stakes established, an emotional bond forged. I was ready to embark on a perilous adventure. One set against beautifully diverse environments, offering all kinds of sights and sounds to uncover. We'll scale glacial peaks, traverse perilous deserts, swim through drowned caves, and bound across the canopies of ancient forests. All while battling the critters that get in our way, solving the occasional environmental puzzle, and helping the vulnerable inhabitants that call this place home. The one-two punch of a stunning art direction mixed with compelling level design makes for jaw-dropping surrounds just begging to be explored. Vibrant, colourful, and full of attention to detail. The world itself is all interconnected and metroidvania-like. The kind with backtracking aplenty, where previously inaccessible areas are unlocked through the magic of acquiring new abilities. There's plenty of them too. One that lets you burrow through the sand. One that lets you breathe underwater. One that lets you propel yourself over vast distances. You get the idea. After being introduced to a new skill, the game showcases all the possibilities. Gently enough to ensure the foundations of muscle memory. Something that's pretty important in any platformer. Then it'll be combined with other abilities. That's when the real challenge begins. Soon enough, you'll just find a flow switching between them. It feels good, it feels intuitive, and conducive to those just another room moments, where you end up playing far longer than intended. If you find yourself stuck, it's probably best to just move on until you're better equipped. After all, the whole open world thing ensures that you can mosey in whatever direction you like. You'll constantly be making mental notes though, of the things worth coming back to later. And every unlock comes with the excitement of knowing their implications on the exploration front. It's always a whole lot of fun to finally be able to get somewhere that's been just out of reach. Ori is equipped with an ever-growing arsenal to assist in the whole combat thing too. You'll be kicking ass, taking names, and doing whatever it takes to reunite with your beloved pal. How exactly? Well, that's entirely dependent on your playstyle. There's your trusty sword, a staple of close quarters combat. The bow and arrow, useful for putting some distance between you and the bad guys. Even sentries that can fight autonomously, freeing you up to focus on more pressing matters. You'll have your favourites, sure, but it's worth swapping between them from time to time to get a handle on what works best against different enemy types. One with a shield might require a heavier attack, for example. It's usually a good idea to have at least one ranged and one melee weapon equipped. You're only allowed to have three equipped at a time, but swapping between them is rather seamless anyway. They're all upgradable too. There are even shards available that you can use to customize your character. 
It might seem like this forest is filled with nothing but peril, but don't worry, it's not just foes out here, there are plenty of friends to be made too. Allow me to introduce you to the Moki. Adorable lemur-like critters live in their best lives. Seeing them mosey about in the backgrounds trailing Ori's every move is genuinely delightful. Eventually, they'll introduce themselves. Ori's presence is a welcome sight. Seems these guys have troubles too. Turns out, reuniting with your pal is just part of a much larger predicament. One that involves the spread of mayhem and decay, following the destruction of the sacred willow tree. It only takes a stroll through a destroyed village to understand the gravity of the situation here. All is not lost though. There's a way to put things right. And yeah, you best believe it's up to us to restore balance to the land. So, we best get to work. For the most part, your objectives can be pursued in whatever order you want. A good place to start is the village in Wellspring Glades though. This is home to many of the survivors after all. And they know the lay of the land. Maybe someone's heard some intriguing rumors. It would be wise to listen, follow the waypoint on your map, and get investigating. There's a whole lot of side quests to pursue offering a nice diversion from time to time while doing the legwork of the main quest. You'll be tasked with helping people out with all manner of requests. Then there's combat challenges, spanning multiple rounds of escalating toughness. I was happy to do most of it, but found myself tired of the time trials pretty quick. Thankfully, there's nothing stopping you from moving on. Except for the eye twitch that might come if you're trying to 100%. The rhythm of the gameplay, the meditative music, the beautiful surrounds, all make for a calming, tranquil experience. Until it's not. Take the pitch black spider cave for example, where one false move out the light results in insta death. That might be someone's definition of fun, but let me tell you friend, it's certainly not mine. There are difficulty spikes too and lots of them, that I found unwelcome and out of step with the rest of the game. I dreaded the boss fights every bit as much as the escape sequences in the first installment. And for reference, I dreaded them a whole damn lot. I admit, I quit one particularly annoying boss fight, then didn't come back for a week, knowing the horrors that awaited on the other side of that saved game. Eventually, you'll overcome your predicament, and all is forgiven. It's amazing how quickly the angst melts away, when you get back to the regular gameplay. I mean, that's a strong endorsement of everything else Ori has to offer. The Metroidvania structure of the world ensures that things can get sprawling and maze-like. Thankfully, there's a map maker who's all too happy to help you on the navigation front. You're also given the opportunity to fast travel by unlocking shrines along the way. But if you're anything like me, you'll only start utilizing them towards the end of the game. There are far too many surprises to stumble upon while traversing through the world. So many hidden rooms and little secrets that might be missed otherwise. I don't tend to dwell too much on the technical aspects of a game. I'm much more inclined to emphatically flail my arms about aesthetics and art directions. And hey, I've already done that. Multiple times. But here, it's worth noting that the game's designed to take advantage of high frame rates. 
it can change the experience dramatically, making the whole thing more fluid and reactive. Something to keep in mind if you've got a formidable setup or don't mind lowering the resolution. I ended up prioritizing 4K over higher frame rate though, for mosey through consistency. As a whole, I don't think Ori and the Will of the Wisps is quite as polished as the first installment. Not unlike the boss fights though, you'll forget the flaws almost immediately. That's based entirely on the strength of the rest of the experience here. I found myself invested in the well-being of the characters and genuinely moved by the story. I'm not gonna lie, Ori and the Will of the Wisps absolutely made me cry. No small feat for a platformer, but like I said, Ori brings the heart. And it certainly captured mine. Okay, that's enough. That was Mosey Through, I'm Dan Clark, thanks for watching, and don't forget to mosey through to the like and subscribe buttons.